Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Blaze cast presentation. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host Blaze Inferno and I'm going to be casting a game between EG and Absolute Legends, Evil Geniuses, uh, if it were. I'm gonna, not going to click on a broadcaster because obviously I'm broadcasting this today. Bring you a game from the Defense 2 tournament and this is a, a part of the knockout stages. Best of three between EG and AL as forementioned. And uh, yeah, it's just a kind of a quick matchup between these guys, very high tier teams, both of them gearing up to go to, uh, set out towards the international in less than a month now. And so they're doing their uh, whole practice groups and uh, boot camps and things along those lines and they're taking time to do this tournament in the meantime. Uh, even got some banner ads for the international on the side there, which is interesting. This is a relatively new UI. I just uh, started casting with it just the other day and it's pretty cool. I definitely like the style that what they do with it. kind of. Uh, brings more feel to it, what you actually can see, and the visual aspect of it. It's just kind of more aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. Anyways, jumping into the game itself, uh, EG is the American team, or North American team. They do have a couple Canadian members, but overall, EG, um, very strong team in that sense. Uh, playing at full strength today uh, versus Absolute Legends, the Australian team, who do have, they do have a stand-in, which is the K Phoenix individual. Um, he, I think he's taken place of... actually cannot remember. It's, uh, Musica, that's it. Musica's the last player there. Anyways, going into the bands here, we've got a Like in Nature's Prophet band, pretty standard. Pusher heroes are just annoying to deal with. Uh, Darkseer, Invoker, and Chen. Uh, they do have a good uh, Chen player with either Malk or... Uh, i trying to remember who the other one. Bulba is pretty good with uh, Chen as well. So those two can play that very effectively. They did bend that out, but the Enchantress is still on the table if they do want to go with that neutral creep route. However, I'm thinking more of, uh, there's a lot of really good heroes on the board. There's a Chaos Knight, EG likes to pick up. They do have the uh, second pick, but uh, overall the Broodmother is going to be the last ban here. So Absolute Legends has the option. They do have the Lashrak available. And they do like to pick up that one pretty quickly. Um, but they also have, uh, I mean, obviously plenty of options. Like I said, Chaos Knight, uh, yeah, those are, I mean, the major high-tier ones that generally get picked up quickly. I mean, Tide and Venno are good, too, um, always. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else they like to play on their lineups. I mean, they like the Lich pickup. They generally slide that in later on. They get the Lone Druid, a very interesting pickup. Um, kind of sets up an uh, interesting tone for their laning setup. He is a, he does scale to the late game. He has a pretty good carry. He can get up to 12 item slots between his bear and himself. And with that bear being just so tanky and so beefy after level 7 and beyond that, he can just get really powerful damage items on him. The Entangle, jo uh, Entangle proc is a little bit uh, luck based, it's a little bit RNG oriented, but when you manage it, it just can be very devastating to the enemy team. And um, I'm curious to see what EG comes out with to try to counterpick him because, I, I mean, I haven't really theorycrafted it myself, but I don't really know any hard lone druid counterpicks per se. I just nothing comes to mind other than just bursting down the druid himself rather than focusing the bear. Um, but they do pick up a Rubik. They can actually summon the bear for as long as you have the spell stolen. And uh, Brewmaster comes out and he has a lot of potential disable, slows, things along those lines. So a good line up there. Um, Lone Druid has the option of either residing in the jungle or in a solo lane, most likely uh, top since they are the dire team, um, if the, he was going to solo. So he can do that. Pretty much you don't see him duel very much. You can have a support roaming in and out. But overall, he wants that solo experience because he can manage it. He's got the berries, he's got himself micro correctly. It's pretty much effectively two heroes in the lane for the amount of damage and uh, tank ability they have, durability, if you will. Um, but that, yeah, the Rubik pickup is fun, uh, and it will be really good against the Shrek. Um, uh, having that aura, the aura reduces magic damage received to all your allies nearby by 20%. It's a good uh, passive that can really reduce the amount of damage received from like Pulse Nova and a couple of Lashrak's other spells. Same with Queen of Pain. So uh, Lashrak and Queen of Pain, very good play uh, pickups there. Um, not sure who's gonna if Shatan's gonna be picking up the Quap maybe, and uh, Godot could be picking up the Lashrak, but he obviously could uh, defer it to one of the other two teammates as well. Um, also, don't obviously know what Phoenix plays. He's a stand-in generically, so. We'll see. He'll probably just pick up whatever the other four do not want to take. But uh, Rubik uh, does have the option of spell stealing a lot of really cool options from the uh, uh, Dire team. He does have the Scream or Sonic Wave from the Queen of Pain. 
Also, the Pulse Nova from Lashrak, or even the Edict, is actually pretty powerful if you pick it up. A rank 4 Edict, you can use it to push towers and things along those lines. Um, their third pickup is actually going to be the Brew, uh, the sorry, Enigma. Uh, the Enigma uh, just adds a lot to their lanes as far as if they want to do a suicide solo with him, they can. If they want him to go in the jungle, which they probably will, based on the fact that they do have a Brew and a Rubik, um, he does have that option as well. And he does really well with the Eidolons for not only jungling and farming really quickly in the jungle, but also for transitioning into push with those same uh, conversions. And then, of course, everybody knows the big black hole. Very destructive teamfight ultimate that can uh, do a lot of damage and just set up a lot of damage potential from either Rubik or Brew. Um, Brew's Fire Panda does AoE damage. Rubik, could, like I said, could steal that Pulse Nova or Sonic Wave. That can be combined very well with that Black Hole, etc., etc. A lot of options there. Um, they do, as far as bands coming out, Enchantress gets picked off. They don't want, they know the Chen is off the table, and they don't want to have to worry about the Enchantress being picked up without any very specific counter to that hero. Tinker going to be the other ban out. Just an interesting pickup that uh, EG does try from time to time, and it gives them a more global presence, and that's something they don't want that Absolute Legends doesn't want to have to worry about. They want their Lone Druid kind of playing in a stationary setup until he starts team fighting. And mm -hmm. CK is going to be the last one. They're banning out carries here. Um, obviously, EG hasn't picked up a very substantial hard carry. Brewmaster is kind of like a semi, more kind of on the durable side of everything. He can scale well in the late game with that crit, but overall, he's focused on just doing a lot of disable and dishing out a good amount of stable damage with that ultimate. Um, so overall, a carry would be nice for EG, but they're going to have to get a lane support along with it, and that's what we're talking maybe Venom Answer for Malk, or uh, obviously Crystal Maiden, Vengeful Spirit. I haven't seen Vengeful in a while, but she is definitely still a pretty good tier. I think Shadow Demon might be a better pickup than Vengeful in a lot of different situations. I think that's why she's kind of fallen a little bit out of the meta there. Shadow Demon kind of does a lot of the different things that she provides a little bit in a different way, but not necessarily better, but in any way that synergizes with a lot of different heroes. Anywho, um, moving on, Beastmaster and Chaos Knights were the last ban, so they will not be taken out. Um, I'm thinking EG is kind of worried about a long-range disable for that against that Enigma. The Beastmaster Roar being very effective at stopping the Enigma Black Hole. Night Stalker is going to be a beautiful pickup from Absolute Legends. I actually really think this was a very, very smart pick. Uh, Quap is probably going to have to suicide top or something along those lines, or they're going to have to duel with somebody. Maybe do. I have seen a tri-lane situation with a Queen of Pain. It's not as effective because she is very experience reliant, but overall she can set up with other, shop with other people. Same with the Night Stalker. He does prefer to have that solo, especially middle with a bottle. He can get a lot of good uh, mana sustainability for his Void, void which is a very large amount of damage at max rank especially. And so, um, Solo Mid Night Soccer is always fun. Get a lot of benefit from that. But uh, obviously, they're going to have to reconsider that aspect because Queen of Pain, Night Stalker, and Lone Druid can't all solo unless they, what they're going to do possibly is do the Lone Druid in the jungle, do Lashrak and an mis unknown mystery character here um, to be picked up for the bottom lane, and then have Queen of Pain solo the top lane. Uh, I'm getting these mixed up because of the fact they're dire. My, my apologies there. The uh, lanes I was talking about, Lone Druid in the jungle, uh, Lashrak, and a random person up on the top lane. There's the Venomancer for Melk. Um, but then the Queen of Pain can go for the bottom lane suicide, and the Night Stalker can go for solo mid. And that could be very effectively done. Uh, now, this, this Venomancer pickup, although it is very, a very iconic pickup for Melk, he doesn't do so well as far as stats go, um, as history has shown for him. But overall, he does set up his team to do very great team fights and sets up his team to do just overall crush very competitively. However, it is one of those picks ups that uh, Night Stalker can go to town on. If he can get that silence off before the Gale goes off, the Void will allow him to gap close right up on that Venomancer and bring him down really quickly. So pretty much. Uh, Venomancer does not ha does have to do really well early game in this situation. Generally, he does, but he needs to focus on a little bit of his own farm to make sure that he's a little bit more tankable because it doesn't have any uh, escape mechanisms until he gets a forest staff or something like that, and he just has to watch himself there. But Melk, um, probably going to be laning with a not super hard carry, so that, that Venomancer can himself can be a little bit aggressive. But I'm um, curious to see what the last pickup will be. Like I said, it can go with a Lishrak pretty well. Maybe a Shadow Demon would be nice. But overall, they have plenty of options there. And uh, the way I might lane it would be like the Night Stalker mid, 
the Queen of Pain bottom, the Lone Druid in the jungle, and those dead dual lane. But they can also mix it up. They're very have a very flexible hero set, and if they want to have the Lone Druid lane or something along those lines, they could pick a different jungle hero. Or well, actually, most of them are picked up now. If you look at the Enigma, Enchantress, and Chen, a lot of them picked off already. But they're looking at something that they can deal with against that Venno, and they're gonna pick up the Tide. Tide he brings a lot to their fights. He can lane well with a Shrek. Um, he did the Ravage, obviously, where Venomancer likes to prolong fights with that Poison Oven. Overall, the aspect of damage over time. Tidehunter's Ravage is a quick fight changer, fight ender, fight whatever. He once he gets in there, pops out Ravage. The stun, the damage that comes out of it, really st makes the fight end that much faster. But Templar Assassin is going to be the last pickup, and she's new to this uh, specific metagame. She's only been uh, patched in a couple of days before, and she got immediately ported over to Captain's Mode as soon as she got brought in. So Templar Assassin from that band, she was uh, in that. She is overall, she's not the most competitive carry, but she is very effective in a niche setup. And I think this might be where EG just really is glad that she got ported over. Obviously, they wanted to pick her up against this lineup and uh, try her out, really. Try to see if they, she can bring something that to the lineup that the International 2 can, you know what I'm saying, They're, that, that she can provide a little bit of versatility and unique carry aspect of it. Now, she's like I said, she's new to, new to a lot of people. Her I can't highlight her abilities anymore, which unfortunately, but she can um, avoid a lot of different damage sources. Like, uh, she can avoid entire uh, Sonic Wave, entire uh, Ravage, whatever, with her Q. Okay. Um, she also has a very powerful burst of physical damage. She can turn invisible if she stands still, um, and that kind of thing. And uh, I'm actually going to have to switch the camera perspective real quick, that was my mistake, but one more another, okay, so we're, we are in the game, Queen of Pain is actually going to be picked up by the stand-in, so that uh, kind of shows that off right off the bat, uh, Tide is going to be playing supportive, and the track already picking up the sentry wards, so just in case they end up trying to go up against this Lanaya, which is the name of the Templar Assassin, played by Fear, the carry player, um, if they do go up against this Lanaya and she melds, they won't have that sentry available to get that kill on her, so... They're probably trying to think of where she's going to be laning. If it's going to be bottom lane, uh, she either usually goes mid or um, into safe lane. And if they do maybe do a dual lane or a tri lane setup against her, that could be pretty effective. Um, maybe even with a uh, offensive jungle in the sense that Lone Druid could pick up uh, jungling in the Radiance jungle instead. Uh, kind of non-traditional aspect there. So Brewmaster um, has some a pretty good items set to tank up. Uh, Soul Ring going to be going out, coming out pretty quick on the Enigma, a lot of t uh, clarity, so you can probably see him going into the jungle, I would almost guarantee it. Milk um, going the very supportive build, he bought both wards and courier for the team, and uh, he just loves kind of setting his team up for victory, and that's just a great way to start it off, is uh, he only has 150 plus 90, about 240 gold worth of items, and other than that, it's all for support. So he sets up his team very nicely there. Bleak's going to be solo on the top lane, maybe going for an urn pretty quickly. Um, and Snoopy on the Lishrak going to be laning with him. So they're actually going to be a, doing a possibly a dual mid with this Tide. Oh no, they're going to try lane top with the Tide. Okay, that makes more sense. So Lone Druid's going to suicide on the bottom lane as he very well can with this bear. What the bear does is he meets up with the creeps, pulls them across, and he's going to pull them either to the river or yeah, he's going to pull them, nope, just right over here. But safely to the tower so that they can't do any kind of creep pull stuff. They did block the pulls, so they can't even stack them, but uh, or use them in any way. But also, there's just a nice aspect of uh, being able to control where the creep wave flows. Um, and what that means is that Fear is going to have a harder time dealing with this creep, uh, these creeps, because they're all going to be pushing on the tower, and uh, at least the first wave. And he can, the bear can always tank up the creeps a lot better than. Lanaya can, for example. It's actually a very active uh, lane up top. It's tri lane versus tri lane. Got Milk with the Gale available if he does want to pick it up on the Tidehunter. Only has Gush, but this Enigma isn't really a tri lane support. He's more, he's really good at farming. He's got the Eidolons, but he's either going to be looking to push down the tower really quickly, maybe add some damage with the Eidolons. He did just pop them off real quick. Going to be farming the remaining Centaur creep with it. Um, pull that one, micro that one back, etc. But overall, uh, Snoopy's got to really try to shut down this idol on farm because they're pretty much counter jungling in the uh, Dyer's jungle to an extent. 
He's not really going into the lane to support the Brewmaster. He, he won't be until he gets a couple good points in Malefice. But he is managing to take up these camps here and put pressure on the lane in general. That's limiting where Lashrak and Tidehunter can stack and pull from. So it is currently stacked. And they're just kind of trying to farm that up. He has gone through three clarities already, so that's pretty abrupt there. But overall, the, the la la lineup between in the middle lane, 1v1, Rubik versus Queen of Pain, I would say Rubik has a small advantage, but overall it depend really depends on the player skill and stuff like that. Bulba loving that uh, Rubik. I've seen him play it once before, and he can be very active with that ability to steal and things along those lines. I'll pull up real quick the CS score so you can kind of see how the lanes are progressing out. Lanai actually doing surprisingly well. Um, has popped up a full tango, but got her bottle already. We've got enough CS to bring that up to her really quickly without even uh, hindering her I initial item build and just putting on a lot of pressure that way. Um, Mail can be maybe looking for uh, trying to get a gale off, but they're mostly just trying to make sure that no experience is denied by these neutral creeps. We want to make sure that they get any CS that they need to and uh, that their experience is spread evenly among their these three heroes instead of being thrown into the void, as is when neutral camps kill your own creeps. And the Radiant team, in that case, gets 0% experience, and that's not something they want. Dyer actually blocking this camp with a sentry in order to prevent them from farming it anymore with the Enigma. Interesting play by Snoopy. Um, but yeah, Absolute Legends kind of sticking it together really well, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, there's not a lot of ac action as far as there, the fact that the tri-lane of supportive heroes and uh, kill gank kill heroes, if you will, are all on the top lane. It's really going to be carry versus carry here. Lanaya gets to go up 1v1 against this bear, against the Scylla bear, and if she comes out on top, as she is kind of winning on CS just by a little bit, overall, there's not going to be anybody to come gank her. There's not going to be anybody to come kill the druid. There's not going to be come anybody to come kill the templar. There's just going to be 1v1ing for a while. I mean, TP support, obviously for dives and things along those lines, but overall, it's really up to these two player skills to kind of duke it out and try to get the CS that brings them into mid-game uh, potential, because Templar Assassin with like a Blink Dagger or a Desolator or even both can be just a really, really destructive force and just cause, wreak a lot of havoc. So she's already, he's already put uh, two points in meld um, whenever he pops that, which is on a seven second cooldown. He reduces uh, Silbear's armor by four and he does uh, do 100 bonus damage. A lot of action going on here. We got the, uh, yeah, just, gonna, just nice locker. Not going to be get, able to get out of there whatsoever. Got the Gale and just got the uh, clap along with some damage from the Enigma all going down onto this Night Stalker, even Malefistum. Uh, Lashrak, Snoopy, was trying to get the deny onto uh, the Night Stalker, but that was not uh, an option. They were just putting out too much damage pressure, and that's going to give him first blood, which actually went to the Enigma. Um, so, Bleak. Walk of shame all the way back. He does have boots, so it's a bit quicker for him. But overall, Night Stalker during the daytime, pretty slow nonetheless. So the, really, they got to play a little bit more passively in the sense that uh, Night Stalker is not not nearly as effective a hero during the daytime as he could be during the night. Um, Quap picking up the double damage, covering the middle lane. As far as CS between these two, you're looking at uh, Rubik definitely, uh, definitely has that advantage there. Three more denies, denying a lot more experience. You can see he's already level 6, where she's still level 5, and now he's got the rank 3 Scream of Pain, which is her best tool of choice. So combining that with uh, Scream of Pain with this rank 3 Fade Bolt, and uh, she's going to be ha having a lot of trouble sustaining in this lane in not too long at all. Shatan just going kind of standard items there. He does have the Sentry available for if she does pop meld in lane, but overall he, she does have the he does have the Orb of Venom just trying to get as many entangles uh, off as possible, while uh, Lanaya quarries the, battle, uh, the bottle back and forth. Sending the Milkman around, making his rounds, and uh, getting that sustain regeneration back to him whenever he needs to. And uh, like I was saying before, EG just denying this top lane from these pulls, making sure that they get the uh, experience for it, get the gold for it, and just overall don't get the disadvantage. Oh, but nighttime has effectively occurred. Nice soccer still only level 4, so he cannot continue further it up with this Darkness Ultimate. However, it is going to be just uh, this is the time to shine for this Night Stalker in lane, especially when he hits level 5. He'll get his rank 3 void and be doing that much more damage. Um, but right now, there's just actually fear actually doing going on. The Shatan gets entangled already for almost first attack. It's going to be entangling fear, and he's going to have to fall back. Just takes a lot of damage there. Trying to bait out the Scylla Bear. If he can get Milk to go in the right position, he can get a really good uh, Gale off onto Scylla Bear and go for the kill there. They've got to be realizing at this point that. Uh, 
Panda is alone on top lane. They're going to be going on him shortly. Going to get the Void into the Gush, into the Lushrak stun. And uh, that's why Panda is going to be falling back here. Does not feel safe whatsoever, and Demon's going to just be covering the tower. And here comes Mail coming in. He does have the... Uh, uh, the passive on him, now he's going to go for the Gale, and uh, he does just do a ton of damage coming out of fear. He's going to try to get a kill real quick. He does have the ultimate coming up, but somebody's TPing in. It's going to be Queen of Pain, blinking in, getting damage on fear, and he does not have his, uh, what do you call it, uh, refraction up. Sorry, I'm not entirely familiar with his skill names just yet, but he did not have the refraction available. Getting a stun onto Queen of Pain, but just so much damage from that scream, rank 4 scream, and then the uh, entangle proc onto the Enigma. He's, he just couldn't go anywhere, and it's actually 3 kill. Oh, but Bulba in return just popping a fade bolt the second that she jumps down. So quick re quick reaction there, and uh, good play by him. However, uh, Queen of Pain now has 2 kills and 1 assist, and that's where she wants to be back in... Uh, control as far as uh, damage and uh, experience. So very mobile, good play by Absolute Legends getting picking up those couple kills. Um, they did lose the Queen of Pain for it and that's going to give Rubik some nice farm. However overall they did uh, finally get some damage on this Lanaya. Um, she didn't have the refraction up, only rank 1. It is 17 second cooldown at all ranks but it prevents more instances of damage um, at higher ranks. So pretty much uh, it overall, if you have more ranks of refraction, you can avoid uh, like four, five, or six things instead of just the three. And with that, it could have survived the Queen of Pain gank. But overall, just going for a very aggressive build with this maxing meld, and that just does so much armor reduction, and so much bonus physical damage. Um, just even with its uh, still bears armor bonus of plus uh, four at the moment, it's still very, very piercing and very destructive to deal with. It just kind of can burst down a very large chunk of uh, anybody's HP right off the bat. And it's under pretty short cooldown too, so that's that's nice for them. But yeah, overall Godot and uh, Snoopy covering up this top lane really nicely, and um, who's to blame them as far as that goes? Night Stalker being a very uh, high presence hero during this time of the night. Uh, halfway through the night now. Not close to his ultimate yet. He, he will get one ultimate off by the end of the night, prior to the end of the night, to extend it th uh, 30 seconds maybe? 25 seconds. And uh, we'll be able to manage that. But otherwise, he's oh, just going to be utilizing the fact that he does have this urn, does have the void, and is going to be doing as much pressure as he can on Demon, who still doesn't have his ultimate. Now they're going to be looking to maybe push the tower. They do have Lashrax Edict at rank 2. That's going to be doing a lot of physical damage coming in right now. They have to take out the creeps first, so that's going to be what they're focusing on. Rank 1 Anchor Smash just doing a little bit of damage there and going in for the push. But some action going on bottom lane. Uh, Universe is barely dodging the Queen of Pain ultimate. Juking behind the trees, and now ultimate comes back, and he did lose out of the mana. He does not have any enough mana to do it, but the Eidolon damage is going to finish her off. He did, could not re retaliate with that uh, Sonic Wave. would have been really cool to see, but overall the Fade Bolt was plenty for him, and uh, that's all he needed. Now he has an ultimate of his own. And he just needs to pick up the next rune to be able to use it. Um, Snoopy looking to cover the top rune here. Ward are, Ward's very well covered on this lane for the Radiant team, but Snoopy has to pick up some on his own for the Dire. Going to put one on the Ancient Ward, covering both the Ancients that Lanai can farm and also the rune spawn here. But the rune does, does spawn bottom lane, double damage, and Rubik's going to pick up that in a heartbeat. Very happy to do so. Um, Alright, so... Now, Queen of Pain does not have an ultimate available. Actually, I missed it on the Enigma. It was skanking him in the jungle. Because Enigma has kind of taken up to ta going back and claiming his own jungle, as he traditionally does. And with these rank 3 demonic conversions, he's actually be able to do a lot of damage. Just farm up the, the creeps really quickly. Um, and I'm curious to see when he'll start maxing the Malefice, if it's going to be a couple ranks for him now. Uh, after the conversions finish up or what specifically but Shatan going all ready for the ancients of the dire team just picking those off really quickly they're just using the bears HP to its maximum benefit he can resummon it when when he needs to it is completely off cooldown and uh, the mana overall doesn't cost him too much anyways but it is the big cooldown that you have to watch it's always 102 minutes on cooldown whenever you do resummon it and bring it back to full health um, bleak Level 6, but did not pick up uh, Darkness. He actually went with Hunter the Night. just wants to take up uh, as much uh, advantage as he can with movement speed and attack speed. 
um, prior to this uh, night ending and try to do a little bit of aggressive, aggressive action here before pushing on the top lane here with a bubble with double damage. And it's, again, he has a sonic wave available and do a lot of damage pressure there. Demon has picked up his ultimate primal split. He was able to uh, just kind of solo in lane long enough and they're going to they're gonna be able to take this tower really easily. All the top lane fell back to bottom, teleporting down and going for some action down here. So Queen of Pain destroys mid. Cover, uh, finishes off that was pretty low from the uh, middle from a couple minutes ago but they did take a full top tower too so good trade between the two and it looks like they want to commit to a little bit further action but it might just be demon farming up really quickly they do have everybody up here still and they can definitely can with the rank through plague wards it, doing piercing damage and bringing down the creep wave really quickly they can do a lot of pressure um, they don't have fortify for uh, Absolute Legends, they have to go in to actually defend it legitimately. Um, it looks like they're going to opt instead to trade, instead of TPing, they're going to trade a Tier 1 for a Tier 2. But uh, Tier 2 is dropping a lot faster, TP scrolls on pretty much everybody if they do want to look to try to defend it. Uh, they do not have their Fortify, so they're pretty much just going to do for a full trade and go from there. Demon, saying, uh, almost saying, uh, just kind of going... Throwing dust, uh, I'm just kind of saying, trying to say a phrase that's not coming through, so I'm going to abandon that endeavor. However, uh, tier 1 did drop on bottom lane, and now they're going to be transitioned to mid. Queen of Pain has just nice to watch herself, but with these illusions covering it, she's going to be perfectly fine. Now, she does have one talisman, one uh, treads, magic wand, a lot of good stats along with her bottle, um, but needs to hit that level 11. That's a big thing right there. Only 264 out of 1100 and uh, really needs to capitalize on that last bit of experience. But a lot of damage coming in from the uh, demonic conversions, and they're popping Fortify again. Are they going to be able to get the Nye is a real question. It's not nighttime, and he does not have his ultimate. They are pressuring him off the tower right now. The demonic conversions do get the last hit on the tower, and a lot of damage are coming into Queen of Pain, and the male does get that, but Black Hole coming in from uh, Universe, dropping, pulling in the last three. The Lashrak does drop down, and uh, Dice Soccer is very, very low, and with the last bit of damage going on Godot, Tidehunter falls, and now Bleak drops down as well. Just a really nice play by EG, dropping down that fight, dropping down the tower, and dominating the next fight. A Queen of Pain got just bursted down really quickly, and with that de uh, demon popping his uh, brueling uh, ultimate, combining that with the black hole, just did tons of damage, and dropped their, the enemy heroes down quickly. Tide does not have Ravage available. That's a mistake. That's straight up, there's... Um, he must have leveled up in the middle of that fight, and did not have it available for when he wanted to. I thought he would skilled something else, but a uh, nice... Uh, Wow, just so much damage coming out there. Uh, it was a nice uh, telekinesis coming in from Rubik. Actually ma maxed it out at this point, so it is a really long stun duration holding them up in the air. And with that, bur that burst damage, what you saw was from both Fade Bolt and from the meld from Templar Assassin. Just a lot of physical damage there. Has picked up his Blink Dagger at this point, uh, and uh, I'd fear just loving to utilize that be very aggressive and make up for the lack of mobility Templar Assassin has because I mean she her move, base movement speed 305 it's okay but the problem is her range, attack range is really really low with rank 1 Scion Blades you're looking at 200 attack damage you need to utilize that Blink Dagger and that Haste Rune in order to uh, really put dish out that damage and uh, but he kinda needs to watch his positioning now as the uh, Absolute Legends team is trying to close in on his position uh, they do not have any wards up. The only ward uh, that AL has, this one's about to expire on top lane, so the only uh, long-standing one is going to be the one on bottom rune spawn. And that's not going to cover too much, as um, the only thing it really will see is pretty much where the rune is spawning. They're gonna, if they're going to be pushing this tower, they're going to be pushing it from the lane, not really covering that area too much. Um, but Fear has to be looking for using this haste rune pretty shortly. Not sure when he bottled it, but I'm guessing it was probably about a minute ago, and he only has about a minute left on it. But overall, doing pretty go well with KDA, topping out with 3-1-2 on Fear, and Enigma getting 5 assists, um, really helping out with that big black hole. Covering 3 heroes without a blink dagger, just with the treads. Really nice. Now, Brewmaster has his blink, and Lanaya just covering the top tower for the moment. Sound Blades do do some splash damage uh, in a line, specifically instead of an arc, um, but they did pick off the tier 1 tower, just pushing that in real quick. And uh, that's what they want to take advantage of, is just the small windows where Tide can't uh, go in and try to prevent the towers with those ravages. And the fact the Spirit Bear is really low also helps them out quite a bit. Now, I'm not sure what Chitan's going for. He doesn't have anything on the bear. He doesn't have anything on himself. I guess he's going for the Radiance. He's got over 3,000, so he's probably saving up for the 3,800 gold Sacred Relic. Mail picking up the Regeneration Rune, and despite the, having the Arcane Boots. 
and uh, he's just covering really well with his ward. He's got the sentry ward up, and is going to be able to take off that ward real, real quick. So just having really good map control, eliminating the only ward that uh, Absolute Legends has on the map right now, and really giving them that them that much ward control. Lanaya covering up with uh, the ult her ultimate, the trap that uh, reduces movement speed, and just kind of having some good active scouting with that as well. It's going to be ranked two very shortly, and that will increase the maximum traps from five to eight, giving her those three extra traps to do the exact same thing. Just do that extra scouting, do that extra uh, potential to slow and disable, and that's always helpful there. And it does not cost much at all. It's 15 mana at all ranks. She can kind of just spam it up and do some high pressure and tide actually because of that trap gets uh, galed gets uh, picked up by the telekinesis and here comes uh, a brute master with the blink dagger in gets the clap gets the ultimate and drops down the tide before he can even ravage no opportunity to ravage there brute master all by himself and lanaya fear just jumping in with that blink dagger following up on the queen of pain and chasing her down and being able to do a lot of damage there. Now Shatan's in quite a bit of trouble with the stuns from the Brulings. Uh, Universe has to get out of there. He does have Black Hole available, but he's getting a lot of damage put back on him. So he has to stay away from this tower, especially with this uh, Night Stalker, but it just became daytime. A uh, little bit more damage on the Lone Druid. It's going to finish him off. That was Rubik's Edict, I believe, that was taking him down. And uh, yeah, he stole the D Diabolic Edict, and he did drop down Shatan as well. So uh, just EG completely dominating on these fights so far. Uh, picking off the tide before he's able to pop anything along the lines of Ravage, and uh, uh, just actually got to kill an alone druid who's extremely tanky at this point in the game. Uh, so, and uh, I like the mobility that Lanaya has now with that blink dagger. Uh, combined with her phase boots, was able to chase down the Queen of Pain and finish her off instead of allowing her to escape back into the base. And now they're going to be opting for Roshan with that negative armor. Really lasts a very long time. Negative 6 armor is doing a huge bonus of damage. Probably close to like 140% physical damage to Roshan while Meld is active. Which is pretty much 100% of the time. And that's just going to drop him down extremely quickly. And she's going to be looking for the Aegis as soon as she drops off that circlet. So... Um, it's actually, AL is in a pretty bad spot right now. You can check the gold graph. Over 10,000 advantage for the Radiant team. And over almost 10,000 for the experience graph. So EG just taking this uh, game in, in force. And overall just providing a lot of pressure there. Rank 4 Scream of Pain now on Rubik. Able to use that whenever he opts to. Um, and Templar Assassin going to be looking for a very quick Desolator and 19 minutes and she almost has a Desolator. So that's going to be really, really uh, painful for uh, Absolute Legends. And there's not going to be much they can do about it. Uh, True Form pretty much has to stay 100% on the time on Lone Druid. Otherwise he's not going to have enough armor to survive against Lanaya's Assault. Uh, Queen of Pain looking for probably a Sheep Stick. Pretty quickly a Slice of Ice. Has the Ultimate Orb available. And it's going to be looking to do something with that, either that or Lincoln Sphere. But overall, that's not going to help too much against this Lanaya, who's just going to town, farming away. CS all the way up to uh, 83 right now, so doing even uh, better than most of his team, and almost as good as Lone Druid himself. And for that farm just being that much more effective on her. Uh, I think the Lone Druid should be pick have a Sacred Relic now. Does not actually. He only he has that 3700. He's about to pick up one more CS, and he will have that Sacred Relic. So he's going to pick that up really quickly and be only 1350 away from his radiance. Then that might be a turning point for their game. Overall, the longer the fight lasts, the more benefit you get from most of the heroes of EG. Not only Panda getting more and more disables as the fight goes on. Oh, wow, actually, a lot of action going on over here. Universe gets caught out, has his black hole available. He's silenced and he's about to drop down. Ravage finishes him off. Does not hit anybody else. The Brutaling's immune. And uh, just act some action on Rubik. But uh, Rubik actually stole the Ravage. Wow, was not covered up by Anchor Smash. And with that, was able to take down the rest of the team. Night Stalker drops down during the nighttime. Despite having his ultimate available, he did not pop it, unfortunately. And now he's going to have to have a full 20 seconds before he was able to use it. Universe does buy back though, and that does cost quite a bit of gold for their team there. So, but overall, Templar gets their Desolator, and the Tide Ravage, even finally getting a decent Ravage off, is still not going to be enough for them to win a team fight in that positioning. And the Black Hole is ready to rock and roll the next time they try to go up against this Enigma here. Uh, Vladimir's picked up, I'm assuming, on Demon. Yeah, Demon picked up on the Brewmaster. He has his Blink Dagger, of course, has had it for a while. And now he has kind of a, another... Not only does he give a lot of nice bonus armor to their team with that aura, but also gives a bit of a improvement to base damage for fear. Um, 
he's not really stacking agility or anything along those lines. It's just a nice little another little burst. Um, a nice little mechanics question that I'm not familiar with the answer to would be um, whether life still applies because technically now she has a ranged attack. Um, I believe since that is a skill that gives her the little ranged attack, I think technically she still gets the benefit from Vladimir's life still, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, uh, Bleak coming in trying to do some damage, maybe pop in there and charge, do a little bit of pressure onto this demon, but overall he's just really, really tanky. And overall he pops in, goes in fearless, go jumps in and gets the thunderclap onto Godot, who now was Malphus done for a few seconds. Uh, overall nice uh, trap from Lanaya, doing tons of damage, taking Queen of Pain two thirds of her life down in two hits. Just insane amounts of damage with that Desolator, and you can just see the potency from this hero right off the bat. Just fear jumping in and doing so much pressure. And now uh, Bulba, Bulba jumping in, he has a Blink Dagger and a Force Staff, very mobile now. He's able to Telekinesis and do a lot of pressure there. Nice, Black Hole coming in, popping on two people. Does get knocked out by Night Stalker extremely quickly, has two ways to disable it, but it gave him plenty of time to take down the Lishrak and the Tide Hunter, finish him off, and they're going to be calling GG in just a minute here. After 17 to 5, just overall well played by EG, and there's there's, there's Godot's GG. So, you'll see, you see the KDA now, um, you'll see the scoreboard in just a second, but overall, um, the fact of the matter is, uh, they had a, uh, Absolute Legends had a tri-lane tri top of a Night Stalker lane, and overall, not only did he not get that much farm, because he was pressured by the other tri-lane, but he wasn't able to add that much threat, that much presence, I mean, you could even have, like, a Morphling, Waveform does as much as the Void at low ranks, so you might as well be applying that much pressure. Uh, Quap did not do bad in the middle lane, I mean, or against Rubik. You're gonna have to gank to win him. Pretty much 1v1ing him isn't an option, but uh, ganking other lanes is. And he did some nice gank action in the bottom lane. So I can't blame the queen of. I mean, not blame anybody. It's just overall this how the game panned out. But overall, I think uh, EG just kind of pulled it together quite a bit more effectively. Uh, Nigma got a couple amazing black holes off. Um, got that mech up really quickly, effectively for his team. And Fear dishing out so much damage. So, that's going to be the end of game one of this best of three match. I'm going to go into another one shortly, but we'll wait for the scoreboard to pop up for that to happen. Um, thanks for watching, guys. This was a Blazecast presentation. Um, I'm a relatively new caster, so if you guys want to keep on giving me some feedback, comment below on the video. Uh, it uh, is my YouTube channel of Blazecasting, if you're watching this from another source. But one way or another, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good one.